Guys, we have a bit of an issue. I want to show you stuff, but I don't want to show you right here. I made I have made a new staircase here, which I will explain in a moment. But first, I think... Whoa! Pre-firing. Ow! Yeah, I think we have a little bit of a uh, of an intruder here. Ow! Come on. Get off my lawn. There we go. Okay. But anyways, welcome back to Better Minecraft Hardcore. In between episodes, we have done... A change to the base. We basically have a brand new base. Yep, th this is what I'm talking about. It is the exact same place, but it has completely been revamped, as you can see. So let's take a closer look on the inside. As you can see, we now have this lovely, well, it was a lovely staircase. We'll have to remove those arrows later. Uh, but as you can see, we now have a lovely staircase going right up to the door. And it has become much, much more spacious. And that is because in today's episode, I want to focus on Tinker's Construct. I have a bunch of stuff up here that we will be taking a look at in just a moment. But all of this progress was done over on my live channel. Yes, we did a live stream in between episodes where we basically revamped our entire base. So if you're interested in catching my live streams where I do stuff like this, as well as other things, live streams in general, check out my brand new live channel down below in the description. Give it a subscribe. And I should mention as well that I stream at least least once a week you can check out the schedule on the channel banner but uh, yeah this is what we did and I am really happy with how this looks I want to get started with Tinga's construct and the first thing that we need is this seared uh, melter I thought it said smelter, but nope, it's a melter the objective basically for today's episode is to get up a functional fully smelter not this thing but like the actual like the structure built and potentially our very first tool forged but in order to do that we need the sweltery controller which is made well like this so we need to make this first and the first thing that we need is grout which in order to make that we need clay sand and gravel of which i don't think i have any of it okay scratch that i do have gravel that is excellent i will not have sand so i need sand and I need clay, of which I should be able to get plenty of clay from this river right here, and sand should be obtainable from this desert. And I should be able to just vein mine this whole thing. Yep. Perfect. And I just saw there's actually plenty of clay around here for us, so that is perfect. Two stacks and a half. I think that's good. Oh dear. I want to make sure that I have enough, so I'm also going to get a bunch of the gravel over here. Just going to hold this down. Yep. Two stacks and 48. That should be good. And this shovel is almost broken. I'm going to go ahead and make a new one and we're going to head on over to the desert. I just want to point out as well that our iron supply is starting to get quite, quite low. So, yeah. Also, I just remembered a comment saying that it was painful to watch me make a vanilla diamond pickaxe instead of a tinker diamond pickaxe. So I looked into it, but it takes quite a bit in order to make a diamond pickaxe head because we need molten diamonds. And in order to get molten diamonds, we need to cook it, well, smelt diamond down diamonds using blazing blood. And the only way to get blazing blood is either by cooking up a blaze or a blaze head which then creates blazing blood. With that said though, this will most likely be the pickaxe head that I choose for our first Tinker pickaxe, so I will be making it eventually. But like I said, that does require that I get blazing heads, which means I need to get some sort of cleaver from Tinker's Construct, which has the, I believe, the beheading ability. So I think the cleaver or the hammer is probably going to be our very first tinker tool slash weapon that we get to make so i'm currently heading over to the desert but i really hope that there weren't any sand in that <laughs> in that lake because that would have made this journey oh you know what we're not going to the desert <laughs> we don't need to it is getting night time so i do need to hurry boom that's a stack another stack all right we should have everything that we need. I will patch up that though. Okay, let's hurry on home before we get eaten alive by something. Oh yeah, our base looks so much better now compared to before. All right, back home. Now we need to make Groot. Grout? Groot? No, not, not that Groot. This Groot. <laughs> uh, I don't think... Is there... There's no real benefit to be making this recipe instead of this one. So since I have the clay balls, I'm just gonna... Whoa, that was... That's a sound. 
why with that nightmare out of the way we now have five stacks of grout all right i'm gonna set all this to smelt and it'll be done well eventually so i decided to go down mining while i was just waiting for the for the seared bricks to smelt and i look in my backpack and it turns out i already have <laughs> Would you look at that? We already have a stack and more iron ore ready for smelting. That is perfect. All right, the seared bricks are almost ready, as you can see. And I'm also cooking up some glass so we can now get started while the rest are smelting. So we get out make this seared melter. First, we need to make this thing right here, which is a seared fuel gauge. And then we can combine that together with these seared bricks in order to get the seared Melter, this is our first meltery. Now I do believe that we also need a tank because it says place above a tank or heater to fuel. So we will go ahead and make that just like so. I wanted to make one of those. I needed to make one of those anyway. So I think if we just place this, well, for now let's place it over here because we need to make some, uh, some stuff to be able to make the big smeltery in a moment anyway. Place this and then place that on top. I think if we put fuel in this, it should register it. If I go ahead and make a bucket, actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and make two buckets. And then I need to locate some lava. I don't think I have any surface lava. Never mind, we do. Well, that is like all the way over here past this vill pillager village here. I don't fancy that. Let's go to a place we have been before, which would be right here. Shields up. Right. This is where we got our obsidian. I hear them around here, I just don't know where they are, but I'm not gonna stick around to find out. So let's just do that. Mission accomplished. We got our lava. So now I think I can just right click this and it has found the fuel. So now we need to make the sweltery controller, which means we need the seared heater, but we need four ingots of molten copper. So. If I go ahead and take some raw copper from my inventory, I don't know how much this trans uh, translates. I assume one raw copper for one ingot, uh, two ingots and six ducats. Okay, so a little bit extra actually. Okay, so I'm going to put two more in there. That means we then have four ingots, which is what we need. I believe we will need a seared faucet which I guess would make sense. And then a seared casting bin. All of this is relatively cheap, which is nice. There we go. Okay, so put that there and a casting bin. And then next, I will need to make this, which is just a circle of this. Put that in there, right click that. And this should eventually turn into a smeltery controller, our first component. Right, the next thing we need is a seared drain, which is covering it and seared bricks. That is very doable. We also need a seared casting table. I'm gonna make another drain because I think I'm gonna leave the setup here because, well, it looks kind of cool, not gonna lie. And I'm also going to be needing a bunch of seared Breaks. So if I just go ahead and make 16, 24, we're going to start off with 24. If I am leaving the fuel tank there, I will be needing another fuel tank as well for this. So I now have eight ingots in here. So I'm just melting the final rock cover, which there's not space for. So I'm just going to do that. And we can go ahead and make a copper block which I can then use to convert it to copper ingots to get the seared drains. I'm gonna want two of those, I think. And that is done. Convert that into ingots. And like I said, I will want two. Perfect. Seared drain right there. All right, bedtime. Then it is time to figure out where I want each of the components and how I want to organize this thing in general. So I think I like the idea of the sweltery controller being in the center. Invalid block in the floor. I'm so confused. Okay, I'm going to wait with the sweltery controller because it's being weird. <laughs> right, I'm going to try and make the structure that I am thinking about first. And then maybe the rest will make sense afterwards. I think I'm gonna start off with a 9 by 9 by 2 area. Also gonna replace the floor. I don't know if I have to, but I'm going to, so it 
looks a little bit more decent. I'm gonna try and place this again. Place this, and I think this is now operational. Yes, advancement made. I think I think I did it. Did I do it? I I think I did it. Kinda. This is looking kinda weird, but you know what? We're gonna live with it for now. I want to pro. You know what? I could actually probably take this down, right? And I could probably, yeah, expand it around if I just make a little bit more of those seared bricks. The taller this thing is, or, well, the bigger the area in here is, the more things we can have inside of the smeltery itself. So right now, as you can see, we have 18 slots, but as soon as I finish this, we now have 9, 18, 27 slots. So the more I keep going, the more we will actually get out of this. So I think I'm actually gonna take this all the way over to the max. Well, not the max, but the max for us with our given roof height. And by the looks of things, I got just enough of the seared material. Good, I think that is a pretty decent size for us. I'm really happy with this. Right, now I need these buckets, and of course I won't be able to take that. That's fine. I'm gonna fill it up there so we have fuel. I am going to go ahead and make a third bucket just to fill this thing all the way up, which does mean that I will have to go down into this lovely place again. I really don't like this place. There we go. Yeah. I don't trust it. Go away. Yeah. And now, it is completely full. I could add more of these fuel tanks. I think I might even be able to place them here, maybe. That might be that might look cool, but I could add another one over there and we would have even more uh, fuel in here. But this should do for now. Now with this, I might consider moving all of this right here over there because all of this is Tinkers related basically. And yeah, I think I might want to move things over. To start off with though, I do want to make this the Tinkers chest. Not sure what this thing does, but I assume it is specifically made for, well, Tinkers. <laughs> and then the rest, I'm gonna go ahead and move over. Right, maybe if I put the different, different chests over there, and put the crafting station here. I know this looks weird, but if I do it like this, right, then I will be able to access everything from this whole station. So I think that works. However, the thing that I think I need next is a more advanced uh, station than this, because currently this is all I can make. I know there is a more advanced table or forge thing than this. So I need to figure out what that may be. I might actually make this. I'm not sure if I will be needing it, but since we are on the topic of Tinker's Construct and setting up for it and whatnot, I think... Oh, no, wait. Did I use... I think I converted all my seared bricks into... Well, seared bricks. And I don't have any more clay or sand to make more. Right, this is what I need. I need a Tinker's Anvil. This is what I needed. Right, Tinker Station, seared bricks and looks like blocks of pretty much anything maybe no definitely not anything um i will need to use stuff like bronze which is molten molten glass and copper okay right equipped with two more shovels it is time to go ahead and get even more clay and gravel and sand sand acquired Clay and gravel. All right, I'm gonna put three gold ingots in it or three gold raw gold in here. I want to see how much it actually creates because I kind of want to make this just to have it. Six ingots of raw gold. So I think I can put that in there and it's just gonna go ahead and make a blank gold cast, which if I have a chest can use just like that. Boom. And I think I know what the what the use of this actually is. I wonder if I can place it on top of there. Yes, I can. Okay, perfect. And if I remember my Tinker's Construct correctly, you can use gold in order to make casts of stuff and it will stay as a cast? Yes. Perfect. So you basically use gold 
to make these different casts for different um, for different things like pickaxe heads and stuff like that. And you can put the casts in here. Okay, so I need the Tinker's Anvil, and I think the easiest thing for me to make is probably definitely not brass, but bronze. So I need to make so three ingots of molten copper. One block of molten glass equals three ingots worth of Tinker's Bronze. So if I have three copper, I need one block of glass. Okay, I think that this is everything. This should result, well, these are going to give a little bit extra because they're raw copper, I believe. So I should, in theory, get 27 plus, well, 27 exactly. Two blocks and six ingots. Hmm. More glass. <laughs> actually, it was specifically one more glass block should actually do the trick. Yep, three. Three blocks. Beautiful. I don't. I don't know why this. Why my hand does that on an interactive block when I zoom in. It's weird. Boom. Sweet. Bedtime. All right. I should be able to now make this. Yes, Tinkers. Anvil. Yep, this is the stuff I've been wanting to make. The cleaver, the hammer, all of this cool stuff. I think the very first tool that I want to make, or tool, is going to be a cleaver. The reason why I want this is because I should be able to behead mobs. Specifically, blazes. So for a cleaver, I need a tough hand, two tough handles, a broad blade, and some sort of plate. Something like this. Now, as you can see, there are a bunch of different uh, materials here. So we have, for example, Eternium from Better End, or Amber, Amethyst, and all this stuff. But if you look at the stats, durability for the Eternium is 2200. If we move to the Amber, durability is only 500 and the mining level is stone. We don't really care about the mining level because this is for killing things, but we do want the mining speed, which is the, the punch speed, to be high, as well as the attack damage, because this is, after all, a weapon. But also it needs to be some sort of material that we actually have access to, like bronze. So I'm gonna Give these a little bit of a look. Silver silver looks promising. I'm gonna bookmark it just in case. Actually, never mind. Silver durability is horrible. Platinum has a fairly good mining speed, not the greatest durability nor attack damage compared to other things. We could you make iron, but again, the durability is not that great. Dragon Bone Broad Blade. That that's a really good one. Emerald is really good as well. Okay, these are our options. Cobalt, I think that's a nether ore. I don't know if we have some right by the portal. I doubt it, but that would be really cool to get. But out of that, emerald is even better. I don't know if we will be able to get... We can process emeralds using just lava. Okay, definitely gonna get an emerald blade. We do have dragon bone, but I want to save that, I believe, for the handles because they make really good handles. As you can see, attack damage is 1.2 times, and for the emerald, it's just one time. However, attack speed is improved on the emerald, so I think a mix of Dragon Bone Tough Handle and Emerald Broad Blade is probably going to be pretty cool. We do have eight Dragon Bones, so I want to use them very wisely. Next, I need to pick some sort of plate. I don't know how good this has to be. I mean, the better. The better the material is, the better. I also only have 19 emeralds. Those are not something that I've found very much of. So I don't think I'm gonna make a emerald plate just because I feel like that's something I will want to save on. A silver large plate is doable. It has spite one. Not something I really need though. I think I might go with bronze. I think that this is what I'm going for. This right here. If you have any tips for me, by the way, on like all of this stuff, please do put it down below in the comments. I have used Tigger's Construct before, but I'm nowhere near an expert at it. Plus, it has been quite a while, so some things will have changed as well. So if you have any feedback or suggestions or anything like that, please do let me know down below in the comments. Help me out. <laughs> okay, so we need two Dragonbone Tough Handles, which should be... Oh... 
hold up. This might be an issue. The dragon bone tough handle requires three per. Hmm. I don't know if I want to use that much dragon bone on this specific cleaver. I think we're gonna go with an iron tough handle. I think that that is probably going to be sufficient and I'm gonna save the dragon bone uh, handle stuff for something even better than just a cleaver. So iron tough handle is still pretty good, which does mean I need a tough handle gold cast. In fact, I'm going to be needing quite a few casts for this. So what I need to do is I need to go ahead and make the stone cast variants of the things that I need here. Molten rose gold. That is not what I intended on making. Hold up. What is rose gold? It has horrible durability, but it does have pretty good attack speed and mining speed. That's good to know. Anyway, that is not what I need. I need to equip this and I can place this here. This stone should disappear, I believe. Yep. But now we have a tough tool handle, a plate gold cast and this right here, broad blade. All right, I think I have everything that I need now, except for this molten rose gold, which I I do not need. So I can go ahead and put these in the cast chest, put this gold cast in here, and I can take all the ingots out for the other things that I don't need, so this is empty. Time to get started. Iron tough handle. I will need three ingots per. So I'll go ahead and cook this iron. One block and three ingots. All right, so I'm going to place down the tough tool handle gold cast. I'm gonna pour in the iron. That should have taken three ingots now, which it has. It'll cool down and there we go. Iron tough handle. Boom. Those are the handles that we need for this thing. Now the remaining iron can... Nope, that... Well, I guess I have an extra iron tough handle now. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to do, but okay. This is why we have the part chest. Next, I need four ingots of molten bronze, which again is three copper, one glass. Yeah, we should we should be good to do this. Okay, I put in way too much glass, but we now have six ingots of molten bronze. So I'll go ahead and take this and the bronze is selected. Pour that in there. Oh boy. And there we go. Our bronze large plate. Oh boy. And now all I'm missing is the emerald blood broad blade, which is, oh dear, that's a lot. <laughs> that is 14 emeralds. Well, compared to everything else that we can make, I think this is our best option, at least until we get some other resources. So, yep, I'm just going to do it. It's not like I can't get other emeralds. And here we see molten glass being formed into a glass block. All right, here we go, smelting up 14 emeralds, one block and five gems. Here we go, into the broadsword it goes. It looks really, really cool though. It does look really awesome. And I think we'll have like two nuggets or something left. Yep, one nugget. <laughs> look at that blade. Nice, emerald broad blade. So I think we have everything we need in order to combine everything together and get an Emerald Tinker's Bronze Cleaver. <laughs> oh dear, okay. Let's take a look at this. Durability is 6,429. It is barterable, maintained, severing, and sturdy too. Nice, and it can get, it has one ability and it has two, it has space for two upgrades. Oh yeah, that's... That's a sword that wants something. <laughs> we also got Hero of the Village. So that's really cool. So I can hold this and have the Hero of the Village effect. That's awesome. But I'm not really interested in that. What I'm interested in is how well it can behead things. And unfortunately, it just turned daytime. So I can't, can't test it properly. But I think that this is a pretty good sword. It takes a little bit, little while to recharge, but all things considered, I don't think that's too bad. The only part annoying about this sword that I didn't know would happen is this right here. I wish that would go away, but it, this is an emerald blade, so I guess I kind of asked for it. Night time has struck. It is time for us to strike. But before we do that, I just realized that I could actually disable lanterns. I mean, that's kind of cool. Just not these, but I can with these. <laughs> Our first test subject of the day, in fact, 
Our first and second. Okay. So let's kill you. Okay. No head there. Now, obviously, I don't think it's a... Whoa. How did... What did you... Where did you come from? I, I lost half my health. Okay. But it did work. It's, it's a chance. I don't know what the percentage is. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> that was half my health. Oh, dear me. This is why we don't go outside. <laughs> okay, so I just really quickly remembered something that I saw in the comments. What you can do is you can take a grindstone and let's say I want this Blast Protection 5 book. I just combine these two like so and I get Blast Protection 5, the book. I'm going to do this because it costs a little bit of levels, but what I'm then able to do, the level tunic is now gone. What I'm then able to do, for example, I can take this iron chest plate just to preserve some iron. I'm going to disenchant it. And then I can go ahead onto this anvil and I can combine them. And now I've basically technically upgraded my leather chest plate with blast protection 5 to an iron chest plate with blast protection 5. That is going to be a lot more armor. Boom. Leather armor upgraded to iron armor. On that note, I'm going to bed. So guys, I'm going to call this an episode here. We really did a bunch of good progress. We now have the cleaver, which means in the next episode, I want to properly explore the nether. We now have some pretty good armor. We have a cleaver. I need blaze heads. So we're going into the nether in the next episode to explore and hopefully get blaze heads. Now I just want to remind you once again to check out my brand new live channel down below in the description if you want to catch my live streams. But other than that, really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to leave it a like and if you're new, do consider subscribing. And if you're interested, you can support my work over on patreon.com slash binary vigilante or click the link down below in the description. But with that said, hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you next time. Have a wonderful day and goodbye.